Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, season six, episode four, going ham at the Pajami Jam. All right, so Giselle and Robin, they are doing a podcast together and it's called Reasonably Shady, <sighs> whatever. Um, <laughs> they say the people just like their, li their lives so much and people just, you know, push them to go ahead and start a podcast. So this is where we are. Um, Robin bringing the reasonable, you know, approach and Giselle doing what Giselle does, bringing the shady approach. Anyway, they're about to have a photo shoot, you know, like for a promotion or whatever. Giselle, uh, she shares with her stylist. Um, I think I forgot what his name is. His name Cal. I'm forgetting. Anyway. She shares with him, you know, how she and Jamal are doing. I mean, I, we don't care. <laughs> we just don't care. I mean, at least I don't care. And I think that everybody she, you know, films with, we have to run down this whole, I just don't know about Jamal and I. Girl, <laughs> we don't care. We don't care. We didn't believe you in the first place. And so we don't care. Um... Robin, she finally shows up, and you know when she comes back in after changing, I kind I like Robin's look. Giselle looked put together as well. They they're both very photogenic. So when the pictures, you know, rolled out, they were very nice, very nice promotional pics. You know, it was it was given what it was supposed to give for their podcast. Um, while they're there, they talk about Mia, and um, they you know fill him in on how transparent Mia is and that just intrigues them so much in reality y'all just want to get in her business some more find out something that you know in the long run you can throw back in her face because that's what you always do Giselle that's what you always do you got to find you know a weak point what's gonna make her tick I got to figure that out and so since you know, Karen is the one that brought her into the fold. They decide, you know what, let's text her. Let's see if, you know, we can get a meeting with her, you know, like go out for drinks, but without Karen. So Giselle sends the text, you know, inviting her um, out for drink and drinks. And she also adds without Karen, <laughs> um, you know. Okay, now we're moving on. Anyway, Ashley and Dean, they go out for lunch. Uh, well, not lunch. It's like dinner time. At, le at least it looks like it. They're going out for dinner. And Ashley, she is pregnant, pregnant. And she's so pretty. Like, she is a beautiful pregnant woman. Especially, like, in this last trimester. Like, she still has, like, a glow. It, it's just mama. You know, like, all over her. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Um, Dean tells her that he want to produce movies. Now, I don't know. I don't know what... I, I don't know. Ashley is just as confused as I am, you know, because she's not on board. She she, she would ask that he does further research, you know, um, you know, what are the risks, you know, that are going to come with all of this? You know, we already have a failed um, restaurant under their belt and I, a restaurant was just not coming to my head. Anyway, um, she's not she's not fully on board with that and so you know they're gonna have to take their time with, with that one and especially she feels like it's not a good time she's about to have a baby you know that's where his focus should be not on producing movies so yeah that they they get their food to go <laughs> she's i don't think she was happy with that anyway karen and raven they catch up on the facetime raven is working out there in new york and she's giving every bit of 90s executive with her with her frames and her her plaid coat and her turtleneck she just it was given it was given um she had a little time to talk to her mama her mama want a new ring so she says you know i would ask that you and your brother you know get your daddy to get me a bigger ring you know for this vow renewal and um and they also talk about um karen she is an ambassador for her, uh, I think it's Siri County. Yeah, for Siri County. And so she, you know, has some initiatives that she's working on, getting Wi-Fi for the people. You know, there are, you know, are some inadequate farming situations going on. And so we, you know, we got to get the people up to speed over there. I guess it's, you know, because it's such a country town, um, they lack in a lot of ways and she's trying to bring them, you know, up to speed so that, you know, everybody else, everybody in Siri County can thrive just like she is. Um, 
so that's good. It was good to it was good to see some you know behind the scene footage of Karen doing that. Um, Mia, she out here working. Love to see it. <laughs> Mia is at one of her locations and she's you know dropping in, checking to see if everything's if everything is the way it's supposed to be. You know, um, she got there's a little table out front. She got to move some some marketing stuff so that you know everybody's eyes are on this. Uh, she goes over to the computers to make sure they're using the correct software. Like she's, you know, she got her hands in it. She gets a call from um, her husband and um, she's, you know, tells her son that she's not going to be able to take him to his practice. And does he mind if daddy G takes him? And, you know, he said he don't mind, but I'm sh he was looking forward to it. Daddy G lean in. Oh, I thought, I, I, I thought she was taking him. I thought she was taking him. <laughs> and you know he just lets her know like I ain't trying to mom shame you because she felt immediately you know judge you know like don't try don't give me too much like she has a meeting she has this she has that going on and he's just saying you're gonna have to figure out how you can balance all of this because this is like your third time saying oh I can't take you oh I can't pick you up oh I'm not gonna be there and you know eventually that's gonna start to be too much and so yeah I'm just asking you to be mindful that's all um, Robin and a, a dang, I, I don't forgot how to pronounce a Scali, a Scali, a Scali, right? Yeah, a Scali, a Scali. <laughs> and Wendy, they meet to work out in the freezing cold because a Scali got on a Scala. That's what it is. A Scala has on a fur coat. You know, Wendy got her coat on. They're going out there to work out. They do a little workout, and afterwards, you know, they're gonna walk. And so um, before they, you know, get on their little trail, Candace calls and she invites them over to her peace out house pajama jam party. Um, you know, the house sold and, you know, so she's inviting everybody and, and everybody, but I mean, everybody <laughs> that, that include, well, not everybody because Ashley didn't get an invite, but everybody else got an invite and, you know, so we got to all get along. They get off the phone with her and Robin is like, this is going to be interesting because I'm a raw. <laughs> Um, I got a text from, I'm going to just, because they bounce back and forth. I can't bounce back and forth. I'm going to wrap up the whole scene with Robin, Wendy, and a scholar right, right, right quick. Okay, so she shows them a text. Um, You know, she says that we invited Mia out for drinks. And Mia's response was, um, unless you want to talk business, there's nothing for us to talk about. Would you like to book an appointment with my assistant? <laughs> and so Robin chimes in. Hi, Mia. I'm quite taken aback by your rude response. Was something done to you that I'm not aware of? Is this how you treat people who are trying to get to know you? What am I missing? And so Mia texts back at Giselle. Since my message was directed to you, I apologize if you felt I was being rude. I was simply being direct and she didn't get no reply. Now, Mia is, she was also telling Karen this same situation because Mia had Karen over and they were kind of bouncing back and forth like that. They were telling the story, then they were telling the story, then they were telling it, and then Karen and Mia. And so, you know, um, Karen is... She she is hands down tickled pink by this whole situation and how Mia conducted herself. I personally have no problem, no qualms, no none of that with how Mia approached that because Giselle and Robin think they slick. They really think they slick. They 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 like to pull people on their side. And so this is what they were trying to do with Mia. They don't like Karen. And so just like Karen said, you know, because Karen has an opportunity to confront this situation. And, and you know, it's just like, if that's the case, if you wanted to just be alone, then why not say, <laughs> don't bring anybody. Don't bring Candace. Don't bring Wendy. Don't bring anybody. But you specifically said without Karen. As if to say, like, she's a minion or like she can't think for herself. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, like, it's... It's it's obvious, and they 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 thought that they put you know <laughs> pulled the wool over her eyes and sis blocked it. She said, "No, you're not about to tell me who I can and can't be around, who I can and can't bring around, you know, to the public restaurant. You're not about to do that." Giselle talking about she set up the invite, the invite list to where, unless it's at your house, girl, you can't tell me what to do. 
<laughs> now I can bring this plus one right on over here to the to the Joe's rib shack if I want to. <laughs> You're not about to tell me, no, don't bring her. You know, because you being messy and you trying to, you know, bring her on to your side. And she saw, she saw y'all coming a mile away. Um, Robin asked Ascala, does, um, you know, how she felt about the whole uh, situation between Wendy and Mia, you know, what's her, what's her take on it all. And Ascala, she just done jump ship, you know, she, she on board with Robin and them. And so it's given very much, oh, well, I think the drama is just centered around Mia. Her new name gonna have to be Messy Mia. No girl. See, <laughs> she was vying for, for, you know, an opportunity to be on this show. And so the only opportunity you got was friend of the show. Cause Mia in them opening credits and she's a housewife. You are not. And I guess she was, she was trying to, you know, do say what she could say, you know, for the shock factor of it all. But girl, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, so Candace. Candace is in the studio laying down some vocals, laying down some tracks or whatever. Um, she finishing an album. The record deal that she was offered last season, she didn't take. Turns out the deal wasn't, you know, a, a good one. It wasn't going to be a good fit. So she's an independent artist funding her own music career. And I know that that is challenging. Um, I have a friend that's doing that right now. He got an EP out right now. He got an EP out right now. I'm gonna drop the link in the um in the description box because I want y'all to go listen to my friend's music. Go listen to it, okay? It's a good, it's it's good music, good R and B, good R and B. Anyway, she she's doing music herself and she's funding it herself. And so you know, kudos to Candice for that. Giselle, she takes Grace to go and do that learner's exam again, and um sis get four questions wrong so she failed and it was very awkward i know i know the worst part about it all for grace is that this is on tv and that you know all the cameras are on her it's just embarrassing and the twins in the bag they want to bust out laughing <laughs> the twins in the back had like you know like the snickering look on their face like hmm <laughs> She failed again. <laughs> they wanted to get them a good tickle. And no, don't do that to your sister. And and Giselle ain't better because she can't be emotionally available for anybody, her children included. And so it's very much there, there. When you want to talk, let me know. <laughs> Just awkward. Um, They're going to go back next Tuesday, though, and try again. They're going to try again. Um... Okay, now we got we got Candace's party. So Karen shows up first, you know, and to enter the house, she gotta take you a little fireball shot. Karen gonna try to take hers, like sip it, like, oh, girl, no. Go on and take it to the head like you did last time. Don't play. <laughs> Don't play, Karen. Um, you know, everybody gets there. Somebody asks, is is Ashley <laughs> coming? And she's like, oh. Damn, I knew I was gone. I knew I forgot to invite somebody. I really forgot to text her. And everybody like, girl, yeah, right. Okay, she's like, I mean, she wasn't going to come no way. Like, isn't her cervix, like, extremely dilated? Like, yeah, she ain't going to be here no way. And come to find out, she ain't coming. Sis is in labor. <laughs> you know, she's on her way to the hospital. Yeah, she, 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 she wouldn't have been there no way. Um, when Mia gets there, before she come inside though, Candace says, okay, so Mia, are we going to be nice to her? What is this? High school? And then everybody across the board, everybody but Karen really is just like, no, we ain't going to be nice to her. She's this and she's that. And she said this and she said that. And it's like, what? Y'all look like a bunch of high schoolers. Really? Sitting around waiting on the girl from band to come into the room and then for y'all to say, mm, are we going to be nice to her? Are we going to be nice to Rachel today? And then y'all bully her, you know, mean girl, her, all of that. No, no. Um, when she gets in there, you know, they kind of grill her. You know, they grill her about her rude response in the group chat. 
And um, Mia takes accountability. She's like, you know, I agree that I was a bit aggressive, but I'm not going to just let nobody tell me who I can and can't bring around. Now, that is where, you know, we cross the line. Um, then a scholar chimes in talking about, I, it just feels like a bunch of delusion going on. Girl, pipe down. Pipe down. Um, it starts to get, you know, a little revved up, you know, because Mia is trying to defend herself and Candace get on the counter, you know, get the room back in order. Let's play um, Prosecco Paul, you know, kind of like Beer Paul. Okay, so while the ladies are playing Beer Paul, well, Prosecco Paul, and they ain't even really playing because don't nobody know what to do. Ain't The balls ain't getting in the little champagne, champagne, in the little champagne flutes. It's just not working out. But anyway, Mia takes that opportunity to go and, you know, pull Giselle to the side. She wants to make amends or whatever. And she apologizes. And just like Giselle always does, she going to make you big and all of it and grovel. You know, it's very much, oh, yeah, but don't ever say nothing like that to me again. I just want you to understand. Don't send me no shit like that again. And Mia like, girl, okay. Shit, I said I was sorry. See, I wouldn't even have given her that. <laughs> because, because, no. <laughs> she's she's impossible she's impossible you try to apologize to her and she still wants to you know like hit you over the head with it some more girl either accept this apology or kiss my entire ass my entire ass because what i ain't finna do is beg, girl you that's what i got to say about that um but Mia plays nice or whatever, you know, she's going to work on her delivery. You know, these ladies can't take her, but she going to work on her delivery. Um, okay, so nobody's playing the game. Let's go to, oh, let's go on to the next. They do the little conga, Congo or conga, whatever the little dun, 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 that little, that little thing. They do that all the way to the living room. And um, now we're going to play Never Have I Ever. Okay, Giselle goes first. Never have I ever done ecstasy. Okay, so both both Wendy and Karen drink or about to drink, and they're like, oh, wait, wait, we don't drink. Because they explain the rules first. And now we're going to try to act like we don't know the rules. Y'all done did some ecstasy, but try it. Because cause as a consensus, nobody else did. I felt like it was a, uh, oh, I don't, what was the rules again? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, but anyway. Um... Then Candace says, okay, never have I ever got my clit done. And she's like, I win. Well, Mia, I win. I win. And she takes her drink. But she, you know, clarifies. She didn't get her clit done. She got a vaginal rejuvenation. And they're like, girl, that's different. <laughs> the vagina is the vagina. And then the clit is the clit. Which one is it? Sis say it's, it, was the, it was the vaginal rejuvenation. Period. Um, okay, so... Wendy, she says, you know, that, oh no, then they ask, when, no, Wendy says, who had, never have I ever did a threesome, and you know, nobody drinks, but Mia, Mia drinks, and everybody's like, oh, Giselle sitting over there judging with the judgy face, like, girl, people have threesomes, your husband, your ex-husband included, I'm sure, done had plenty without you, and did, I'm sure, so maybe that's why you got your nose turned up because you was never invited to the threesome. Um, Mia says she's had a threesome before with her, you know, current husband. And um, she's a voyeur, you know. She says she, she, because somebody asked, was it a man or a woman? It was a woman. She didn't want the woman touching her, but she enjoyed watching her husband get down. And see, that's not my ministry, but for some people, that's cool, you know. Again, not my ministry, <laughs> not my ministry at all. But yeah, you know, that's, that's her thing. Ain't nobody going, I'm not judging. I'm not judging at all. And they sitting up judging and then going to say, but well, we not judging. I mean, Ashley would be sitting right with you and she probably would have. I feel like Ashley and Mia would like each other, you know, as far as that, as far as the free spirit of it goes and, and the being very blunt and transparent and, you know, straightforward. I'm sure Ashley would definitely like that about her. Um, okay, Ashley, you know, somebody, you know, when Ashley is mentioned, Mia is just like, um, where is Ashley? And then we see Ashley, you know, go headed to the hospital. She was supposed to have an at home birth, but ended up needing to go to the hospital. She was on that crying and carrying on. When we come back, <laughs> Ashley gonna have a new baby. So yeah, 
or we at least, I don't know if they're going to show us, you know, her delivery and all of that or whether or not is she just going to come back. Boom, here go the new baby. Who knows how they edited this thing. But anyway, that was it for Potomac. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>